Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. This week I really wanted to talk to you about my journey into Korean natural farming and regenerative farming. And if you watched my video a couple of weeks ago, I was telling you all about my journey into regenerative farming and all of the interesting resources that I've come across lately, um, including the No-Till Flowers podcast and a couple of really great books. So if you want to find out more about the beginning of my regenerative farming journey, then check out that video. So what I wanted to start with um, at the beginning of my regenerative farming journey is a lactic acid bacteria soil drench. So I just picked this because I feel like it will benefit my soil um, and just get me kick-started into the world of Korean natural farming and regenerative, regenerative farming. So I made a lactobacillus soil drench which is going to help hopefully to improve the tilth of the soil, to aerate the soil, um, to help create a more balanced microbial and fungal um, community within the soil and to outcompete all of the bad bacteria um, and all of the pathogenic bacteria and fungi. So things like powdery mildew, I'm hoping that the lactic acid bacteria or the lactobacillus is going to help me with those kind of problems uh, when, when it gets towards later on in the season. So I will be going for in this video from how to make the lactic acid bacteria serum to how to apply it on the soil um, and I'm really sorry if um, I missed out any steps I'll try and um, if, if needs be I will put some um, annotations or something over the top of the video just to make sure that I've got everything covered and I just wanted to reiterate that I am extremely new to all of these techniques and the regenerative farming and Korean natural farming um, topics so I've done quite a bit of research I've watched YouTube videos and I've read a couple of books um, but yeah I don't want you to think that I'm an expert that's that's the whole message that I'm trying to get across on my YouTube channel I am just experimenting with things and I want to show you how those things go from from very the very beginning like I am at the moment um, to the results of my experiments so I'm hoping to create um, a control experiment with um, all of these new things so I will be growing the same varieties um, and I will be doing nothing to half of them or a portion of them and then I will be applying the treatment to the other portion of them. So yeah I just want to say that I will be um, sort of showing you how to do it but I re would recommend um, that if you want to have a go at doing this yourself then I would do your own research have a look at a couple of books, listen to a couple of YouTube videos and find the thing that works for you because obviously um, these kind of methods are tailored towards the kind of soil that you have and um, sort of the methods that work for you. So definitely do your own research and find out what you think is going to work best for you. So let's get into the video. Hey guys, so I'm just going to have a go at making some of this lactic acid bacteria mix that I have been reading about uh, for the last couple of weeks and I've actually just had a look in this book I recommended this in one of my other videos um, I haven't actually had a chance to even open this yet but I just flicked through it to see whether there was a lactic acid bacteria um, recipe and there indeed is a lactic acid bacteria recipe in there so I'm not strictly going to be following this recipe but I'm just going to um, copy really what I've seen online from other YouTube videos there's a mass of really great YouTube videos out there so um, I don't expect you to copy from my video if you're going to have a go at making this but I would definitely recommend um, having a look at Chris Trump's videos and also um, Bear Mountain Farm videos as well so um, basically what we do to get this lactic acid bacteria started is we use rice wash water so we've got some white rice here and I've just added some water to it and uh, I've swished it round a few times and then we get that cloudy um, water that you will be used to seeing I'm sure so then what we would do after that 
is to strain it or just to pour off the water into a jar. So I'm just gonna tip it in. This is definitely not the best way to be doing this. Okay, so I've strained off the wash water and there you can see we've got a nice full jar and then I'm just going to put some tissue paper over the top of it and the point of the rice wash water is that um, it will be a carbohydrate source for the, the bacteria so the bacteria will colonize this jar and use the rice wash water as a food source we um, will be leaving this in a place like the kitchen worktop or something for between three to five days and it will form three distinct layers hopefully Okay guys, so I'm really sorry but the audio didn't work on this clip so I'm going to have to do a bit of a voiceover to explain what is going on in this clip and basically my rice wash water has been sitting on the kitchen worktop for three days at room temperature and it did start to form a little bit of a film on the top and some sediment on the bottom and it has sort of remained a cloudy liquid. So what I'm going to do now is uh, mix it with milk. Uh, so in the process so far, we have captured bacteria in the rice wash water. Um, and what we are going to do now is to culture lactobacillus specifically by giving it the food source that it prefers, which is the lactose within the milk. So we are going to mix this at a one to 10 ratio. So we will we'll be putting one part rice wash water to 10 parts milk. And an important thing to remember at this stage, which I actually forgot to do, and I do think that it impacted the results, is that you need to have the milk at room temperature. So I, um, I literally just bought this milk from the shop and then just poured it straight into um, the jar where I should have waited for it to get to room temperature first. And then I went and put another tissue paper lid on top with a uh, elastic band and labelled it with the datum. And this process um, should take between five and seven days to grow the lactobacillus. And what we will see at the end of that period is a curd layer on the top, which is the proteins and the fats that have separated. Um, away and then we will have in the middle um, the whey which is the lactobacillus serum um, and there's plenty of videos online about how you can make cheese from the curds on the top but I definitely wasn't going to do that this time um, and the mistake that I made with the cold temperature milk actually impacted the serum in the way that um, I didn't get as many curds produced as should have done um this also could have been due to the fact that i used semi-skimmed milk instead of full fat milk um and i also left um this solution in my container workshop which probably gets quite cold on the night time whereas i should have probably left it in the house where it was a little bit warmer i asked on the korean natural farming facebook page whether it was okay to use because the layers it's, it sort of had a, a curd layer on the top and then the serum and then it had another layer of quite thick layer of sediment on the bottom um, and that was due to the cold temperature so I maybe could have left it a little bit longer than the seven days that I did leave it for um, but it was fine to use so I went ahead after seven days and separated it anyway. So it's been about seven days since I added the milk to the, the rice wash water that we had left for three days previously so I'm going to have a go at taking these curds off the top and um, filtering out this serum okay 
Okay, so this bit's gonna be a little bit tricky, the next part, because I don't have a funnel. So I'm going to have to improvise and find a way to pour the serum from here. And I'm going to use a t-shirt because I don't have a strainer or anything. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to get the, that into here. And then that will be our lactobacillus um, concentrated serum in here and we can start using that on the field. Okay, so I hope this works. I might strain it into this jar and then strain it again in there if it doesn't work. But I've just uh, put an elastic band around the t-shirt um, and it's going to go into this jar. So I just feel like this is gonna be really messy, but we'll give it a go anyway. All right, so there we have it. Our lactic acid bacteria or lactobacillus serum. I need to find a backpack sprayer so that I can get all these, these jobs done. We have one on the farm, but um, I would like to purchase one of my own just so that I can use it for these natural farming techniques. Um, and this stores long-term in the fridge or you can mix it with brown sugar to if you want to store it out of the fridge but I think I'm going to keep mine in the fridge um, it's not going to take up too much room uh, if you want to see how you can store it out of the fridge by mixing it with brown sugar then check out Bear Mountain Farms video um, on storing it okay just as a side note I put the lid on this but it actually needs a breathable lid so I will be replacing that with kitchen towel and leaving it in the fridge. So my new sprayer has arrived and it weighs an absolute ton. So um, what I'm going to do is I've been watering my beds um, for about an hour or less than that because you want the soil to be moist before you spray the lactic acid bacteria onto it so that it's got a nice environment to um, go into and it's not just going to shrivel up as soon as it hits dry ground. So I'm going to spray at a rate of 1 to 1000. So I've got a 16 litre knapsack and I've put 16 mil in it. And then I'm spraying um, 2 litres per metre squared. So each bed is 45 metres squared. So I'm going to be spraying 90 litres of this mixture onto the beds so I've got a lot of a lot of that to do this afternoon um, and then I'm going to water it in afterwards uh, and I just want to say thank you to Bear Mountain Farm for giving me the advice um, because I knew uh, how to make the lactic acid bacteria and what ratio to mix it to uh, in water I wasn't sure how to apply it per metre squared so I reached out to Bear Mountain Farm and they offered me the answer which is very kind so thank you for sharing that information and yeah let's get cracking good morning guys so yesterday I sprayed half of my bed with the LAB mixture and um, I'm just about to go and spray the second half and it's just been raining which is good because um, it needs washing in so instead of washing, letting it wash in um, the rain's done it for me. So I'm about to go and spray the rest and I brought some nozzles with me because yesterday <clears throat> It took me absolutely ages to spray one full container. So I'm going to spray the rest and then I'm going to be mulching with cardboard on top of that. Um, it's still pretty early in the morning because um, I have uh, an alpaca walk at about half nine. 
this morning so I want to get all of this done really before the alpaca walking um, the boys have been so good we've done about three alpaca walks in the last week and we're about to do our fourth this morning um, and I thought I would change up the route a little bit and go somewhere different so we'll see how they respond to that today um, so yeah I've nearly got my first bed prepped with the LAB so I'm looking forward to seeing how the results um, pan out and seeing how the soil is improved. I got my second um, tank of uh, lactobacillus sprayed on the beds so what I'm going to do now is um, put some of this corrugated cardboard over the top of it and then I'll be putting the weed membrane back on. I'm not going to be planting for a while yet so I'm going to um, the cardboard should help to keep the weed pressure down because although we've got the weed membrane the seeds um, the weed seeds love to germinate in the holes that I've cut out for the plants so that is a nice little temporary fix and then when we come to planting we can just make a little hole in the corrugated cardboard and that should we should be able to plant the plant in there and that would will hopefully protect the plants for a little bit but the, uh, the lactic acid bacteria is going to really help to break down that cardboard once it enters the soil. So that's going to be an interesting one to look at. We're having a crazy hailstorm. cardboard down and the weed membrane back on top of it so that bed is done it's been treated with the lactic acid bacteria so um, I need to move on to this bed next um, and I've got a volunteer coming tomorrow so I'm just wondering whether to either tackle that tomorrow or to plant out so I've got uh, four trays of larkspur and nigella and cyanoglossum to plant out so we could do either or i'll have to decide tomorrow um i've just had a bit of a potting on session because i got loads of pots delivered yesterday so there was a few things that were desperate to be potted on like sunflowers and asters and things so they're all done and i'm really running out of room now so um yeah i hope you enjoyed this video and you'll have to let me know if you try the lactic acid bacteria yourself um i am going to be trying to do a control experiment where i will plant the same plant um, variety in one bed and treat it with the lactic acid um i think that i'm going to be planting sunflowers in that bed that i've um prepared today so I will plant some flowers elsewhere at the same time and see how um, they differ in pr productivity, in plant height, um, health, general health, um, and make notes and let you all know how that goes this season. So thanks so much for watching guys and I will see you again next time. Mm -hmm.